a lot of hydrogen. Whoa, that's excellent. Look at it go. Whoa. G'day and welcome to the build table on a really dull, dismal, dark day. I'm going to have to get some lighting in this area here because I just, you can't see. It's terrible. Hopefully this camera will pick stuff up, but really, yeah, the lighting is terrible. Now, I did a video on my XJet channel in which I was surprised to discover that there are very few rules regulating balloons. Now, if you didn't see that video, I'll just summarize for you. In reality, um, you cannot fly a 100 gram drone near an airport in this country um you know it's it's illegal because it's too dangerous but you can take a balloon with a one and a half cubic meter envelope of hydrogen gas and you can attach a one kilogram or one and a half kilogram steel weight to it and let it go right at the threshold of an airfield there's no specific laws forbidding that now there are general rules that say you must not endanger aircraft but in theory you can make such a balloon and release it to fly over town and it's quite legal uh I don't understand it myself, but I thought, well, let's take advantage of that because um, there's some things that we know. We know that not everything that is legal is safe and not everything that is safe is legal. So let's look at that. I'm going to do some experiments. I'm going to do a little project here, which is not going to be dangerous. It's not going to be illegal, but if you were a nutcase, you could make it dangerous, but I'm going to take every step to ensure that this is safe. And what am I going to do? Well, we're going to build a balloon. We're going to fill it, well, we don't need to build a balloon, I bought a balloon. I have, uh, we're going to fill it with hydrogen. We're going to attach a miniature FPV system to it. And we're going to let it go. Because apparently if it's completely out of control, which a free balloon is, it's safer than something which is in complete control via radio link. Apparently being out of control is safer. And this balloon can have a mass of up to two kilograms. Uh, and it's safe, whereas a, a drone in this country of any weight is just considered unsafe near an airport. So you work it out. Now I expect there'll probably be some revisions to the balloon rules after this because it highlights the, the, the difficult situation you get when you have people making rules who do not have any experience with the technology they're using. Now we've got people making rules about drones and they think they're doing a good job and they come up with this stuff, but really they're working from behind a desk. They don't have a clue what they're doing. So, you know, I want to show them how much safer the drones are than balloons. But hey, First of all, we've got to build our balloon. And so I went up to the supermarket today and picked up the important ingredients for our free balloon. So we're going to get some, a rubbish bag, a nice big black rubbish bag for the balloon envelope. We'll just go for super cheap. Low cost means thin, which means it's going to be lighter. So we'll get five bags here. And these are how many litres? doesn't say, but I'm sure it'll be enough. Recycled plastic, it's got to be good. And we're going to need some drain cleaner. Some drain cleaner with sodium hydroxide and that, what does this contain? It contains uh, made in China. That doesn't tell us anything. And directions, safety directions. Uh, I wish they'd tell you what was in this stuff. Yeah, sodium hydroxide. There we go. 190 grams per litre. This will react with our aluminium to give us hydrogen. We've got our drain cleaner, which is sodium hydroxide. It's a chemical, it's a highly alkaline chemical, which reacts with aluminium. And I've got some aluminium foil here. This is just regular cooking foil. Reacts when you expose the aluminium foil to the sodium hydroxide, you get the release of large amounts of hydrogen. How much hydrogen? Well, that comes later when we science the shit out of stuff. And of course, I've got some balloons, because we're gonna do some tests first. Now, I would like to make quite a large balloon, but no larger than is necessary to carry aloft a little FPV rig. I mean, it could be something like this, the little run cam FPV rig, the micro camera and FPV transmitter. And 
we could put this underneath. I don't really want to waste a perfectly good and very, very nice little setup like this. So I'm probably going to use some old RF modules. We've got old FPV video transmitter modules and some cheapy CMOS cameras. So we're going to make a disposable payload. We're going to put that on under the balloon. We're going to let it go and see how far it gets. Now, of course, this sodium hydroxide and aluminium foil isn't the only way to make hydrogen. I did look at the option of using electrolysis, which is a kind of in some ways it's simpler, some ways it's more complex, just using electricity to rip apart water into hydrogen and oxygen. But uh, the, the beauty of this is you just need a bottle of this, some of that, scrunch it up, put it in a bottle, and away you go. But to do electrolysis, you'll need a power supply and you'll need a container and some electrodes and things. So this is going to be simpler. But we, I'm going to do some, um, what would you call it, empirical tests first. I've got some 30 centimetre, that's one foot diameter balloons here. I'm going to mix a bit of this up, a bit of aluminium foil, just see how much it takes to get one of those balloons full. It'll give me a ballpark figure for how much space or how much we're going to need to fill up a bigger balloon to give us more lift. And I'll also do some calculations. How much can we lift with a 30 centimetre or one foot diameter balloon? Um, and I'll show you the science behind that on the whiteboard because this can be a learning experience as well as a fun one. So let's get going. Okay, just gonna, I'm just going to show you the reaction that happens when you mix these two materials. Here's my aluminium foil. It's actually quite thin, but I have to use these big snips because oh, it could be so hard to cut otherwise. Look at that. Oh, look at There we go. This is a, a tiny little piece of aluminium foil. I don't know. That's probably, it's not even a, maybe a gram and a bit. I don't know. I don't, I don't have scales that are low enough, high enough resolution to measure that. But there's my piece of aluminium foil. I've got a plastic cup. I'm going to... Put, screw up this piece of aluminium foil, drop it into the plastic cup, as you can see. Notice my hands never leave my arms. And what I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of this sodium hydroxide solution in here. And this should foam up. Now, one thing that I have to be very careful of is that the reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the aluminium foil is one that is exothermic. That means it generates heat. And this is a plastic cup. So if it reacts too quickly and too aggressively, it could melt the plastic cup and then I'd have sodium hydroxide, which is a very corrosive material, all over my build table. So I'm going to take steps to avoid that. Watch this. Et voila! I have a metal container and I'll put that in there. So if this melts, because it's quite thin plastic, if it melts due to the heat, then the sodium hydroxide will go into this metal bowl. Eventually it would probably corrode the metal, but it'll give me time to take it and get rid of it in a safe way. Right, I'm going to focus in on this, I'll zoom in on this, because I'm sure you want to see what happens. I'm not going to put the camera right over the top of this because the fumes that are given off are also corrosive and I don't want to ruin my camera because I don't have a spare. Let's get this childproof lid. Hold on. Oh, cancel everything. It's got a childproof lid. I'll never get into the damn thing. Okay, here we go. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. That's a bit disappointing, actually. This is... Oh, there we go. Is there any foaming? Yes, there's a little bit of foaming going on. I was hoping it would be more aggressive than that. This has got all sorts of other crap in it. It's drain cleaner, which is mainly sodium hydroxide, but there is other stuff in there. I may have to get a pure form of sodium hydroxide because that, to be honest, is rather disappointing. In fact, it's incredibly disappointing. <laughs> and that's why we do these little experiments. If I'd set everything up and used a gallon of this stuff, I'd be really peed off. So, here we go. That is just utterly disappointing. I'm going to tip this out because it's obviously useless. I've got some other sodium hydroxide, which is a little bit old, but hopefully be more impressive than that. So, jump cut. Here we go, and the science continues. I've got this, another form of drain cleaner. Now, this was um, anhydrous. That means it was, it was crystals of sodium hydroxide. But, interesting, look in there. It's all gone liquid. Sodium hydroxide deliquesces. That's a big, fancy scientific term for it means it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere and becomes a solution. So, it's absorbed moisture in the air and become a solution. All by itself. Didn't even have to add water. Of course, it took a lot of time. So, I'm going to put that into here. Or some of that into here. Ooh, look at that, eh? Woo! And what I'm going to do is just top it up with a little water. Jump cut. And that was very interesting because just the act of adding water to that sodium hydroxide made it warm. And that's also exothermic as it uh, as the crystals dissolve in water. So we're going to put this back in our little safety bowl over here. Hopefully, get some more aluminium foil. I'm going to be really. I'm just going to rip it. Oh, oh, the humanity. So there's our aluminium foil, screw that up into a ball. Hopefully this doesn't have any kind of plastic or treatment on it, which may be why it didn't work before, but we will find out. Now I could screw this up into one of those little balls that's all of rage at the moment, make it a solid ball, but I don't want... The reason I'm using aluminium foil instead of a piece of aluminium, because I do have 
aluminium sheet and block and bar around here is because it has more surface area for a given amount of material and the reaction takes place on that surface area so the aluminium foil should react much more quickly than a piece of or a block of aluminium so I'm going to drop this in here now we should see some foaming hopefully it floats on the top who would have thought now let's just give that a moment to get going and it should start reacting yep I can see some bubbles already here we go see it's starting to bubble away in there so oh it's getting quite ferocious now so this is producing a lot of hydrogen whoa that's excellent look at it go whoa see now why <laughs> it's exothermic see the steam coming off that that's why I use the metal container because this is a very aggressive reaction so we've learned something here we have learned that um, we're going to get a lot of heat output and that's important because if I just filled up a one gallon jug and threw a whole of aluminium foil in there a plastic jug it would melt it would melt from the reaction and that would not be good I'm just going to move this a bit further out of shot because I don't want these fumes getting too close to my camera um, so there you go that is like really aggressive um, I might actually take it and uh, get rid of it before it actually melts that container jump cut okay so while I was carrying that out it did actually melt the plastic container and the uh, caustic soda the sodium hydroxide spilled into that metal container fortunately it's stainless steel didn't hurt it but it shows you you've really got to think ahead when you're doing these little experiments and we've learned a lot we've learned that this drain cleaner is shite doesn't work uh, but this one which is pure sodium hydroxide works a treat uh, but the reaction is actually probably a little too vigorous because it generates too much heat now how can we slow that down well obviously we could use a piece of aluminium with a smaller surface area so that would be like a thicker piece or a block or a bar but that's going to take too long so um, I'm not sure I'll probably compress the aluminium foil somewhat more than I did which will reduce its surface area and also I'll dilute down the sodium hydroxide so we have a weaker solution and that will reduce the rate of the um, reaction and I'll also put the jug the container in which I'm generating this gas I'll stick it into a bath of ice water and that will then help suck away the heat from the exothermic reaction so we've learned a lot today on this first part of the experiment we have learned how to make hydrogen out of aluminium foil and sodium hydroxide we've learned that some drain cleaners don't work and we've learned that you've got to be really careful because there is plenty of room for disaster here and you notice also that that was gushing out hydrogen and if we had a naked flame nearby there was a small potential for a bit of a bang but one of the great things about hydrogen is that it dissipates so very quickly it's much lighter than air so all that hydrogen rushes up to the roof and then disappears out the window so we don't have to worry too much about a fire risk but however it, once we've filled a balloon up you don't want to get a naked flame anywhere near that balloon and that includes things like static electricity we all remember the Hindenburg and what happened there not a good look we do not want our balloon going up like the Hindenburg so we have to take a few precautions and unfortunately unfortunately here in New Zealand it's turning into winter and static electricity is always a much bigger problem in the winter than in the summer because humidity is the enemy of static electricity if you've got a humid environment the static electricity drains off it, it dissipates very quickly but when it's cold you can have less moisture in the air the relative humidity may be high but the absolute humidity will be low which means static charges can build up so we'll have to be very careful when we're here handling our balloon a little balloon like this 30 centimeter balloon here probably not so much of an issue but if I fill up a huge 50 liter rubbish bag plastic big plastic rubbish bag that would be pretty dangerous so we'd have to take the necessary steps so here we go that's the basic um, chemistry involved that we're going to use and when you think about it it's um it's quite a good first step we've learned a lot today there you go if you've got comments questions anything at all to say about this project then put them on the bottom of the video I will be continuing this it's really dull and dark today. that's horrible so I will finish filming for today because this is probably going to turn out to be crap video and you're probably noisy and all sorts of I don't know so you may not see this but you may if you do well I've decided to put it up anyway um, give me your thoughts give me your ideas Are you, any suggestions for this because my goal is to take a balloon with FPV gear on it and just release it so it's going to float over town and the FPV camera will be looking down and we'll get live video back and we'll just see how far we can go before the signal's lost and we'll see what happens and it's 100% totally legal is it safe? well yeah you'll see I'm taking plenty of safety precautions both in the preparation of the balloon experiment and in the launch and the operation of the balloon experiment so no lives will be endangered by this and it could be kind of exciting I haven't seen anyone doing this before I know there's people that launch free balloons that go up into the you know almost into earth orbit and you get to see the curvature of the earth but haven't seen anyone using super cheap balloons making their own gas and just releasing them so they float over town get pictures of all the streets and houses and things let's see with our own google earth our own google loon there you go thanks for watching questions comments usual place bye for now stay tuned
for the next episode. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe so you don't miss it.